tragedy. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. This is CNN's continuing coverage of 9-11, America Remembers. Here again are Aaron Brown and Paula Zahn. And good morning again as you had a quick look at Ground Zero. Uh, we welcome our viewers across the country who are joining us as you wake up on this Wednesday morning in September. We welcome as well our viewers around the world who have joined us today on CNN International. Um, we begin now what is going to be, I think, in all honesty, a very difficult three or four hours as we approach the moment the planes hit, as we begin the ceremonies at the Pentagon at Ground Zero. Um, these are tough hours ahead as the nation remembers. And we remember this all on a day when we are as a country on high alert because as they say, of all the chatter of the possibility, only that, the possibility that something will happen. One administration official saying this morning they could be planning a one-year anniversary party. No one knows what to expect. Our military forces on an upgraded alert to a protective Delta Force, they call, call it, meaning that uh, our soldiers will be armed and ready if there is an attack at various uh, bases overseas. But our focus in this hour will be on Ground Zero. One year ago, it was at 8.46, American Airlines Flight 11 crashed into the North Tower of the World Trade Center at that exact time today. There will be a moment of silence, not just here in New York, also at the White House, also in London, at Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan, and many other places as well. It's hard to imagine what that moment's going to feel like, isn't it? I mean, if you try and imagine what the precise one-year moment is, this is London, Prince Charles, and uh, Prince one son. William, I William. see William. I William, see Harry. Harry. No, I see Harry now, yeah. actually. Uh, making their way in. Uh, there was that uh, extraordinary moment. I don't know if you'll remember this, and I, I don't precisely remember how many days it was after when uh, in, in London uh, there was this gathering where they they sang uh, was it either the national anthem or God Bless America, I forget now, but it was the most lovely sharing of a tragedy that you could imagine. Uh, in any case, uh, Prince Charles and family making their way into what, what appears to be a church just this morning uh, in London, where it is uh, well into the afternoon on the 11th of September 2002. Uh, when you think back to the, um, what's a good word, cascade of events of that morning, it's a little hard, I guess, to be optimistic uh, thinking as we're being torn away. There was the thought, that first thought uh, of the plane that hit uh, the building, and I, I'll tell you what I thought, that it's a horrible accident that's happened. That optimism, if you can call it that, uh, dissolved very quickly uh, as the second plane hit, as the buildings collapsed. And then, of course, the notion that New York was not the only target in this. Um, we are not going to show these pictures often today, but we are going to show them now. And I want to warn you that they are coming. Uh, some of the images of the planes hitting the towers are going to be in this next piece. If that is an image uh, that's still a year later, if you have trouble dealing with it as I do, uh, this would be a good time, honestly, to turn away. With that in mind, here in this hour, is has it happened just watching uh, the smoke pour out of here the papers are still falling from the sky when i got outside i saw everybody was like looking up toward the sky and i started running downtown toward the building and everyone just looked right up and another plane came and just barreled into the other tower up and the first thing I thought was, my God, that plane is flying so low. In a big city with these tall buildings, what's it doing so low? Well, it is uh, a grotesque sight to look at. Two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. And we realized that this wasn't some mistake, some accident. 
It wasn't even some tragedy. It was an enormous act of evil. This is my generation's Kennedy assassination. This is the day where you say, where were you when? There was a uh, huge plume of smoke which continues to rise from the west side of the Pentagon. There was a voice in the hallway full of running people yelling, get out, get out, get out, we've been hit. I walked up right up to the scene and I could see all around me were pieces of the airplane. Most of them small enough to put in your pocket. Um, although I did see some bigger pieces, such as the big piece of fuselage and also the crumpled cockpit windshield. It's a corridor where a lot of Army offices are located. Wow. And oh. some Jamie, people were... Jamie, I need you to stop for a second. Suddenly Aaron interrupts me and says, wait a minute, Jamie, something's happening here. And then the first tower came down. It's just been a huge explosion, a cascade of sparks and fire, and now this it looks almost like a mushroom cloud explosion. There was this huge plume of smoke that came up, and so you really couldn't see how much of the building had come down. And I, you know, I cannot see behind that smoke, obviously, as you can't either, but just look at that. I was thinking, this can't be. The Capitol building itself was evacuated. Um, it was a little bit chaotic. The Senate and the House were both in session that morning. And people started pouring out. And I turned to a guard and I said, what's going on? And he said, there's a plane and it's headed this way. And at that point, we started running. Stay away from the Capitol, James! And I remember thinking to myself, how far away do I have to be from the Capitol to not die? Senior White House staffers who were evacuated, all they can tell us is that they were told that there was a credible threat on the White House as well. It was very clear. All of a sudden, there were Secret Service guys uniformed ringing the building. Go, 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 go. Women stays. This is what you want. Go. And then you started seeing everybody come out. Then they came back saying, run. And there, as you can see, perhaps the second tower, the front tower, the top portion of which is collapsing. Good Lord. I remember saying, oh my God, and went silent for a bit and let people watch it. Um, I've been a reporter most of my life. i had never seen anything like this, certainly not in my country. still get chills when we see the video of that day one year ago today. I'm Carol Lynn reporting live today from Shanksville, Pennsylvania. There was no video of Flight 93 which crashed in the field behind me. It was the saving act of 40 passengers and the crew members of Flight 93 that may have saved hundreds if not thousands of lives somewhere in the nation's capital as those passengers took over and did what the nation's defense systems could not do at that very moment and that was to overcome the hijackers that day. Uh, the ceremony here will be taking place at about 9.30 Eastern to honor those lives. But joining me, the mother of Mark Bingham, one of the heroes of Flight 93. Thanks so much for joining us, Alice Hoagland. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. You know, it's still very hard to watch those pictures. And I'm yes. just wondering, when you see the replay of that day... It's very moving. It's, uh, it just brings it all back, seeing it here, um, to see the, the images of, the, of Flight 175 hitting the South Tower and the North Tower in flames, the Pentagon in flames and to sit here on the field knowing that one year ago exactly Mark 
and the other beautiful people on Flight 93 met their deaths. Such an ugly thing to happen in such a beautiful place. Mark, an extraordinary young man who made a life as a, a career as a public relations executive and yes. spent that summer running with the bulls in Pamplona <laughs> yeah. and living life large. What's it like for you to be back here? I know you've been here before, silent moments with the other families. It's very moving. It has been a beautiful experience. The people of Somerset County and Shanksville have been beautiful to us and the local charitable organizations, Pennsylvania September 11th and NOVA, Susan Hankinson deserves a lot of credit for the putting together the memorial. such a lovely event that she has helped us to, to experience. Last night at Seven Springs, a local resort, uh, uh, Susan put together a beautiful, beautiful program. The Johnstown Symphony Orchestra. Symphony Orchestra was there and the Marine Color Guard and they played adagio for strings and they showed the faces of our 40 loved ones family members and you could just the the feeling was just palpable it was it was a lovely experience people described it as uplifting which is great yes. to hear one year later <laughs> it was Alice I want to read back one of my favorite quotes that you had told uh, several months ago about the recovery process when you doubted even for yourself that you could really move forward or how you were going to move forward and you said I know I have to find contentment in my life you can't prevent the birds of sorrow from building a nest in your head <laughs> well <laughs> how are you doing that now well it it it's a slow go um, in some ways I hope never never to find release uh, I hope to dedicate my life to the issues that have come up as a result of September 11th now you said you wanted to use your anger to remember your anger about what happened here to help others. yes and I hope all of America does that I hope that we don't slide into complacency I'm very grateful for this important marker anniversary because it's a time for us to reflect not only on the heroism of our loved ones the sacrifice sacrifice of the people who died that day, but also on the fact that terrorism is an ever-present threat. Well, you were a flight attendant, or you were a flight attendant for United Airlines. I am Airlines, a flight attendant. still so when Mark um, crashed. Yes. And you have been very active on the issue of making sure that flight attendants get proper training on board. How's that going? That's correct. Well, 5th of September, uh, the Association of Flight Attendants marched in force on Capitol Hill lobbying for the Senate bill, uh, the arming pilots and cabin defensive security security training for flight attendants bill and I'm happy to say that uh that our efforts paid off. We uh, the right. Senate bill passed something like 87 to 6, and it was a beautiful day for us. Uh, we um, we support the bill because because it provides for a uniform standard for training for flight attendants. We need cabin defense security and training. We'll never forget the story of Sandy Bradshaw, one of the flight attendants on board Flight 93, who boiled water in preparation yes. to attack the hijackers. Yes, and C.C. Lyles and the other flight attendants. Attendance Lorraine Bay and You'll Wanda be Anita them Green all today at the ceremony Deborah at Ninth Welsh. Eastern. Yes, Alice Hoagland, thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Just one of many stories, Paula, of so many of the survivor families who have taken their own lives now and have dedicated them to new causes. I'm Carol Lynn, reporting live in Shanksville. Back to you, Paula. Thanks so much, Carol. And for those of you just joining us, we wanted to quickly bring you up to date on some of the things that might have happened while you were asleep. Uh, uh, for the first time since the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis, uh, armed missile launchers will protect the nation's capital as our level of alert has now reached the, the level orange, the second highest level. The decision made uh, yesterday by Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld to arm those portable uh, Stinger missile launchers. At the same time, we know that every federal air marshal will be working today. We know that the Coast Guard will be bolstering its patrol and we also know here today as the president comes to New York City uh, that the level of alert which is high has existed here in this city for many many months this but is nothing new to those of us who live here but I suspect that as uh, in your city wherever your city happens to be uh, extra attention is being paid to uh, the water systems to transportation systems as this threat elevation moved up a notch uh, yesterday uh, everybody all the local police agencies in all parts of the country, seaports, uh, uh, immigration checkpoints at the borders, everything tightened down just one more notch uh, in some cases because it is simply the anniversary of
of something horrible and who knows, and because of all of this chatter that is going on. And that's not just true here in the United States. It is also true at American military installations uh, overseas, and particularly true in Afghanistan. And that's exactly where we're going right now. Christiane Amapour is standing by in Bagram to uh, give us a better sense of what's going to happen there as commemorations are just about ready to get underway. Christiane, good morning. Good morning, Paula, and that's exactly right. In about 10 minutes from now, remembrance ceremony here will be held for those who were killed in that attack in New York and Washington and Pennsylvania one year ago today. You know, there are 7,000 or more U.S. men and women in the military who are continuing this war on terror. It is not quite over yet, although they do have al-Qaeda and the Taliban in disarray and on the run. These have been capable of mounting small attacks. There was one in Kabul last week, and it killed and wounded scores of people. There was, of course, that assassination attempt as well on the life of the president that failed, the president Hamid Karzai. Now, here they will be remembering the victims of al-Qaeda and Taliban. Behind me, they are already gathered in formation. The general in command of all U.S. forces here will address uh, the men and women here, and there will be a message from President Bush read out. There will be taps. There will be a moment of silence at the exact moment that the first plane went into those World Trade Center towers a year ago. And then this ceremony will be over. In Kabul earlier today, the U.S. Embassy held a small ceremony, a solemn ceremony, in which they unveiled a plaque. It was a plaque that covers a piece of the World Trade Center building that had been buried there many months ago. And on that plaque, a very simple inscription, here lie the remains of the World Trade Center and those who perished. We serve the cause that they cannot. So all over Afghanistan, wherever U.S. forces are and coalition forces, remembrances today and a determination and a knowledge that at least here in Afghanistan, this war against terrorism continues with an operation underway right now called Champion Strike. Back to you. Thanks so much, Christiana, and we're going to do the best job we can uh, to let you know what's going on around the world. We have the challenge of taking you to ground zero, sharing some of those uh, ceremonies with you. Right now in London, uh, a ceremony is going on in St. Paul's Cathedral, this ceremony of about ready to get in Bagram, and uh, we're going to try to dip in, in and out of these events uh, to give you the best sense we can of the kind of uh, spirit of generosity that's being shown around the world as we honor the lives of so many lost a year ago today. Uh, this is not fact but observation. I was looking down on 8th Avenue here in New York. It seems unusually quiet in the city as if everyone's focus is on ground zero just to the south of us here. Um, 20 minutes or so from now the ceremony begins a little less, people gathering. This has become an American place. Uh, as we see the president, uh, and I suspect this is the president and the first lady leaving church, uh, church service they were at in Washington, uh, as the president will make his way to the Pentagon, uh, his first uh, formal stop on the day. Um, and just back at ground zero, if you can for a second, uh, people gathering. Uh, this, is a, uh, uh, this is a place as we've said before, I guess, where something important in American history happened. We hope that Americans from all over the country will come and stop by and pay tribute. Um, but there's something oddly uh, New York about today, at least in my mind, is with the ramp a few months ago, uh, they brought a, a casket up uh, uh, symbolizing the end of the bagpipers who have had far too much work to do in the last year far too much work to do. They made their way over from Staten Island across the harbor. And you can still see these obscene shots of where the Trade Center was torn apart and how it collapsed. And for all the work that was done and all of the tons and tons of steel that were taken away, they're still in the corners of Ground Zero, these unmistakable signs that war was declared. And, and that there were victims. And while you will see thousands of family members uh, today, there will be those who do not go here. There are family members who just find it simply too painful to go to this place, particularly as the future of this 16-acre uh, will eventually stand here, a memorial 
In addition to apps and buildings, that uh, remains very much in the, the craw of, of those so deeply affected by what happened here on September 11th. We are struck saying to us, do not forget, uh, and I believe this, that uh, none of us forgets uh, individually the 2,800 people who died that they built the comings and goings and the sorrow and hope the celebration too of Ground Zero today. Yeah, it's really impossible to sit here about 10 stories above the street level and not be moved the survivors came down about their hearts of so many people here in lower Manhattan. A few images I want to point out. I want to go across Ground Zero uh, to the east side here. This amazing image, Aaron, and put their construction workers uh, with hard hats on top of their head, who toiled for days and weeks and months cleaning up this operation down here at Ground Zero. They have gathered. If you watch the fence that run along the easers who have lined in single file, uh, where there are hundreds and hundreds of others who have gathered as well. Uh, below us on the street here, uh, the West Side High families have come to gather, many of them carrying pictures, them pictures with a sunflower in their hands. They have come here with holding hands, full of tears, and that is quite obvious as to why those emotions are right there. That is essentially our building is enormous. 150 feet wide. It was hung up a few days ago, and it literally towers over the scene, and we'll start to see the families who have arrived here. That long ramp into the pit of Ground Zero. Thank you. Uh, we see the uh, president, excuse me, going back in the White House to step back the black uh, tape across the next brace who lost their lives that day. And so they're never more brave. They are brave always, but never more brave than they were. Making their way up, when every human instinct we can imagine was to say, get out. And so we look at their pictures, their extraordinary courage. We honor them every day and especially... Made reference to some of the construction workers who have lined up around the perimeter area of Ground Zero and those are the same men and, and some women. The rescuers and those are the painstaking job of taking small shovels and picking through the debris yeah. one handful at a time because there was so much concern that the structure that remained overhead would collapse on them. And I think that is a, an image that most of us who went down to ground zero in those early hours will never forget the horror of yeah. my uh, uh, just I, I hope people have not forgotten what ground zero looked like in those first you look at it now and see it differently but in those first days now it, it looks uh, familiar um, 365 days ago it looked uh, uh, obscene uh, and horrible and I hope we we have not forgotten that the other thing we need to pay attention to this morning is this new uh, state of alert that we find ourselves in. Let's turn to Wolf Blitzer, who's standing by at the Pentagon, to tell us a little bit more about the high alert that was declared yesterday, as well as a new alert that was upgraded for some of uh, overseas military facilities. Good morning, Wolf. Good morning, uh, Paula. Just about an hour from now, a little bit more from an hour when he's here at the Pentagon. You're absolutely right. Orange, that's a, a high level of alert, a terror alert announced yesterday by here in Washington. Only red, the highest state of alert, which would mean that uh, some sort of terrorists are going forward, increasing its diligence as well. The Central Command, which is responsible for much of the Middle East, including Afghanistan, having gone to threat level, Delta, the highest level alert for the military, bringing an expert on this, the retired Supreme Allied Commander, the retired NATO Commander, General Wesley Clark, who's joining me here at the Pentagon. Uh, first of all, before we talk about what this ceremony will mean for the men and women of the U U.S. Armed Forces, Delta, when you were the NATO Commander, the Allied Commander of U.S. Forces in Europe, did you ever go up to Delta? We never went to Delta. Delta is where you go to the highest possible state of readiness before you actually engage in right here. And uh, I think based on the information that we believe they've received and certainly the whole uh, affairs in the area, it's warranted. So when General Tommy Franks, the commander, says, let's go to Delta, that potentially could mean some sort of threat was almost imminent. It could mean that he either has specific intelligence of a specific threat or he needs to, as a precautionary measure, bring the troops on instantly to a threat if it appears. And as we're seeing the uh, the backpipe, let's pause and just listen, General, for a moment as they begin this procession.
bagpipers moving and so as uh, the clock continues to tick. Uh, General Clark, when the men and women who are here, most military personnel, they remember what happened to this building almost one year ago. What will they be thinking? Because you were, as a young captain, you once worked in the exact spot where flight, American Airlines Flight 77 impacted on the back. I think it is very fertile. I don't know if they could have been there. It could have been them who were being memorialized today. The respect they have for those who died, their families, the sense of brotherhood that they feel, determination to show resolve and finish this job. I think the heart and the women's are to be there on the front line in Afghanistan or wherever it may be, serving at the point here. And this is the most they do right now. They're doing it. As we continue to see these backpipers move on Ground Zero, uh, General Clark, the the fact that in Washington, in this area right now, there is a high level of alert and there are still shell-fired anti-aircraft missiles and Avenger anti-aircraft systems deployed the first time since the Cuban Missile Crisis. What does that say to the men and women of the military? Well, it says that this is a very significant uh, period. It's a threat that is possibly to build. And there's a determination on the part of the United States to be prepared. And we're looking at pictures, uh, General. You'll identify with this. Uh, the uh, troops at Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan, they're beginning their own uh, mem uh, memorial service commemorative uh, the region. Let's listen in briefly. With valor and skill, together with our coalition partners, they have achieved success. Americans have also fought back against terror by choosing to overcome evil with good, by loving their neighbors as they'd like to be loved. Countless citizens have answered the call to help others. They have treated the relief efforts, improved homeland security in their communities, and volunteered their time to aid those in need. The spirit of service can be as houses have joined, new established to a free corps, committing themselves to change America one hard time through their momentum, millions of acts of decency and kindness. Those we lost past 10 or 11 will forever hold a cherished place in our heart and in the history of our nation. As we mark the first anniversary of that tragic day, we remember their sacrifice and we commit ourselves to honoring their memory. I pursue peace and justice in the world and security at home. By a joint resolution approved December 18, 2000, the Congress has authorized and requested the President to designate September 11th of this year as Patriot Day. Now, therefore, I, George The point w. of the spear, U.S. Uh, troops at Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan, half a world away from here at the Pentagon, they're beginning to remember vividly, pointedly, what occurred only one year ago. And that resulted in October 7th, in the beginning of the U.S. airstrikes in Afghanistan. General Clark, we'll be back to you periodically. Thanks, Senator Reid. An hour from now, the official ceremonies, a moment of silence, will be in here at the Pentagon. We'll be here after that. Thanks back to Aaron and Paula in New York. Thanks, Wolf. Thank you very much, Wolf. Uh, if we can quickly go down to ground zero here. Um, so much is happening now in so many different places, uh, but as you see the bagpipers uh, walking in, we earlier explained that the ticker or the call uh, this morning and throughout the day has the names of uh, the 3,000 people, 3,000 plus people who died. I said at the time when I first explained it, it had 3,044 names on it. That was off by 19. There are 19 names we will not know today for obvious reasons, but 3,025 people. It will take eight hours to roll through each and every individual name. We stress this to you all. These are individuals with families, and they are having a tough day today, as are we all. The White House, the President is back at the White House. He had gone to a church service a short time ago, made his way back. He'll be going to the Pentagon. He's expected to, to make some kind of short appearance here. And uh, as Aaron mentioned a little bit earlier on this morning, we will be traveling with the president as he makes his way to the Pentagon and Shanksville and come to Ground Zero later today. Jim Woodruff is in Washington and part of our team of uh, correspondents and anchors covering the events, Judy. Aaron, uh, you just showed the picture of the White House, and as you said, the president is there. 
uh, preparing to head over to the Pentagon, but there will be a ceremony at the White House to remember the first plane uh, as it hit the first building of the World Trade Center, A46. Um, yes, the loss of life was much greater in New York City than it was here in Washington, but it's very clear to me that the people of this city feel very close to the people of New York in their loss. And we watched uh, what happened there as if uh, in our backyard, if you will, these two cities just 300 miles apart. Uh, but it was as if, you know, a piece of our hearts had been ripped out as well. So I think the emotion is every bit as deep felt here in the nation's capital as it is, uh, you know, there in, in the city that you are in. Uh, this is a president for whom this tragedy has really shaped the term in office. The war on terror has truly shaped the Bush presidency. Before 9-11, in the year 2001, George Bush was a president still finding his way. He was barely above 50% of the public opinion polls. Today, a year later, uh, his popularity, uh, favorable rating, soared at one point. Ninety percent, it's now settled down in the, in the mid-60s, high 60s. But the point is that people see someone who has found a voice and who has really seen uh, a mission given to his presidency. Uh, it is, it's been a, you know, a searing year and yet a year that has given him a purpose. So this is a man much more determined, and I, I heard you, Aaron, a little bit later say when you were talking to Joe Albaugh, the president's good friend, the one word he could think of was resolve in describing this president. I think that's absolutely right. And tomorrow, tonight when the president addresses the nation uh, from here in Washington, and tomorrow when he addresses the United Nations, you're going to hear that resolve again as he connects what happened in November on September 11th last year with today's effort uh, not only to avenge what happened uh, you know by the al-qaeda terror group but also to go after other countries that may pose a threat to the united states first and foremost iraq and in doing so we know the president faces considerable resistance not just from democrats but from republicans from america's allies but this is what the president has set his sights on and that is what we're going to be hearing about and thinking about even today as america takes a pause to remember september 11th Good Aaron, Judy, I guess i'm reminded of what the president said uh, early on when he talked about the country's resolve there's no sense of resolve and he said these acts shattered steel, but they cannot dent the steel of American resolve. The uh, bagpipers, the bands are making their way onto Ground Zero. It's uh, coming up on 20 minutes to nine here in New York. Um, I, I always hesitate to speak for anyone but myself here, but I. I imagine uh, many of you too are starting to get that feeling in the pit of your stomach that we are coming up on a moment where our lives, our personal lives, our national life, our political life, our economic life, the way we view our children, our families, our churches and synagogues, where it all changed and it's six minutes away. Uh, it, it, it's, it's hard to imagine that so much change could be wrought in such a single moment. But we all know that that's what happened. And in six minutes, that moment will be upon us again a year later. Uh, Ground Zero will be the place where it begins because it is the place where it did begin at 8.46 on a sunny September morning. We'll use it all in the Midwest Indian summer. Indian summer morning. It is a moment that is remembered around the world as an to South Africa. September 11, 2001, an unforgettable day forever etched into the consciousness and memory of all of us when an outrage of unspeakable horror and evil happened. An outrage that was universally roundly condemned and rightly so, and shan't condemned as evil forever.
Und er hat gesagt, der Herr der Welt richtet sich in tiefe Sympathie und Kondolenz zu euch allen, die ihre Lieben verloren haben, zu euch allen, die in New York verletzt haben, hier in Washington und in Washington und in Pennsylvania, zu euch allen in dieser Nation, die so traumatisiert sind. One coming from outside the United States, may I speak on behalf of the rest of the world that our hearts still go out in compassion and sympathy as we still wrestle with the consequences of those traumatic events of that day, that awful day we are today commemorating. So many times over the last year, we have heard from those abroad. Uh, their condolences and their concern for Americans. America has a, a particularly interesting place in the world. Sometimes our, our friends um, find, find us a bit difficult to deal with. But in, these year, in this year and in these moments, I think the United States and citizens, all of us, have drawn great warmth and, and uh, friendship from people in uh, places that are obvious in uh, Great Britain and places that aren't so obvious as well. Uh, across Africa, the world was stunned by what happened. Uh, not just those of us here, but around the world, people were stunned. And as these bagpipers converge on ground zero, a truck has started in some cases at 5 o'clock this morning as they came from five different bureaus, uh, boroughs that is, and uh, now, of course, United Ground Zero. At the beginning of this procession, they were watching this two by two, and then they kept on picking up people along the route. Unfortunately, uh, the sound they will create is a sound we've um, become far too accustomed to. Watching very closely here at the clock um, before we move away, as we the ceremonies here are about to begin. Again today, again today, with to our hearts and minds, those who perished on this site one year ago, and also those who came to toil in the rubble to bring order out of chaos, and those throughout these 12 months 
have struggled to help us make sense of our despair. We join with our fellow Americans in a minute of silence led by President George W. Bush from the South Lawn of the White House in Washington. One hundred and thirty-nine years ago, President Abraham Lincoln stood on a once beautiful field that had become its saddest and largest burial ground. Then it was Gettysburg. Today it is the World Trade Center, where we gather on a soil to share our common grief. Governor George E. Pataki. Thank you, Mayor Bloomberg. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. In a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that they might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot, cannot confident, we cannot hallow this ground, the brave men, living and dead, who struggled here, have consecrated it far beyond our hours to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, Rather be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. neighbors, our husbands, our children, our sisters, our brothers, and our wives. They were our countrymen and our friends. They were us. Mayor Rudolph W. Giuliani.
Ahmad Jr. Ahmad. Maria Rose Abad. Andrew Anthony Abadi. Vincent Abadi. Lawrence Christopher Abel. Alona Abraham. William F. Abrahamson. Richard Anthony Acido. Jesus Acevedo Rescond. Heinrich Bernard Ackerman. Paul Aquaviva. Donald Leroy Adams. Patrick Adams. Shannon Lewis Adams. Stephen George Adams. Ignatius Odo Adanga. Christy A. Adamo. Terrence E. Adderley Jr. Sophia Boruad Addo. Lee Allen Adler. Daniel Thomas Aflito. Emmanuel Quasi Afuakwa. Alak Agarwal. Mokul Kumar Agarwal. Joseph Agnello. David Scott Agnes. Brian G. Ahern. Jeremiah Joseph Ahern. Joanne Maria Alayados. Shabir Ahmed. Terence Andre Aiken. Godwin Ajawala. Gertrude M. Alagero. Andrew Alameno. Margaret Ann Alario. Gary M. Albero. John Leslie Albert. Peter Alderman. Jacqueline Delane Aldridge. David D. Alger. Sarah Ali Escarcega. Ernest Ali Kakos. Edward L. Allegretto. Eric Allen. Joseph Ryan Allen. Richard Dennis Allen. Richard Leonard Allen. Christopher E. Allingham. Anna Allison. Janet M. Alonzo. Arturo Alv Alva Marino. Anthony Alvarado. Antonio Javier Alvarez. Victoria Alvarez Burrito. Telmo E. Alvear. Cesar Amaranto Alviar. Tariq Amanula. Angelo Amaranto. James M. Amato. Joseph Amatuccio. Christopher Charles Amoroso. Kazuhiro Anai. Calixto Anaya Jr. Joseph Enchandia. Kermit Charles Anderson. Yvette Constance Anderson. John Andrea Kehoe. Michael Rock Andrews. Jean Ann Andrucky. 
See you Nia Ang. Joseph Angelini Jr. Joseph Angelini Sr. David Lawrence Angel. Laura Angeletta. Doreen J. Angrisani. Peter Paul Apollo. Sima Aoyama. Frank Thomas Akalino. Faustina Apasal Jr. David Arce. Patrick Michael Aranios. Louis Arena. Michael George Arsinski. Adam P. Arias. Barbara Jean Arasigi. Jack Charles Aron. Michael Armstrong. Richard Avery Aronoff. Joshua Aron. Yafet Jesse Ari. Myra Jo Aronson. Carl Asaro. Patrick Asante. Michael Edward Asher. Michael Asiak. Thomas J. Ashton. Janice Marie Ashley. Mayo O. Asitenbag. Greg Arthur Atlas. Gerard T. Atwood. James Autofred. Lois Frank Adversano Jr. Ezra Aviles. Sandy Ayala. Arlene T. Babakitis. Eustace B. Bacchus. John J. Badagliaca. Jane Ellen Bassler. Robert J. Firewalter. Andrew J. Bailey. Red T. Bailey. Garnett Edward Bailey. Tatiana Bakalinskaya. Michael S. Bax. Sharon M. Balkan. Michael Andrew Bain. Catherine Bantis. Gerard Baptist. Walter Barron. Gerard A. Barbara. Paul Vincent Barbaro. James William Barbella. Ivan Kirillos F. Barbosa. Victor Daniel Barbosa. Christine Barbudo. Colleen Ann Barkow. David Michael Barkway. Matthew Barnes. Sheila Patricia Barnes. Evan J. Barron. Renee Barrett Arjun. Natalie Barrios La Cruz. Arthur Thaddeus Barry. Diane G. Barry. Maurice Vincent Barry. Scott D. Bart. Carlton W. Bartles. Guy Bartfi. Ina V. Basina. Alicia Basmajian. Kenneth William Basnicki. Stephen Bates. Paul James Battiglia. Walter David Bauer Jr. Marlene Capito Bautista. Mark Lawrence Davis. Jasper Baxter. Michelle Beal. Paul what sad work is, is this to read all these names? A two and a half year old baby died that day. A child barely old enough to talk. An 85 year old man. They came from 25 different countries. Michael Ernest Beekman. In just a moment, and you might have been able to hear the first of the bells, they will ring a bell to mark the time when the second tower was hit and when all of us knew. This was no accident. Elliot Belson. This was war. Denise Lenore Benedetto. Maria Bangochea. Brian Craig Bennett. Eric L. Bennett. Oliver Duncan Bennett. Margaret L. Benson. Dominic J. Berardi. James Patrick Berger. Stephen Howard Berger. Alvin Bergson. Daniel Bergstein. Graham Andrew Berkeley. Michael J. Berkeley. Donna M. Bernards. David W. Bernard. William Bernstein. David M. Berry. David S. Berry. Joseph J. Berry. William Reed Bethke. Timothy Betterly. 
Carolyn Biong, Edward Frank Baye, Paul Bayer, Anil Tahiram Baneve, Bella J. Bokan, Shimi D. Vigilison, Peter Alexander Belfield, William G. Bigart, Brian Belcher, Carl Vincent Binney, Gary Eugene Bird, Joshua David Birnbaum, George John Bishop, Jeffrey Donald Bittner, Albert Baliwa Blackman Jr., Christopher Joseph Blackwell, Susan Leigh Blair, Harry Blanding Jr., Janice Lee Blaney, Craig Michael Blass, Rita Blau, Richard Middleton Blood Jr., Michael Andrew Bucardi, John P. Baki, Michael Leopoldo Buccino, Susan M. Buccino, Bruce D. Bowen. given flowers and also the opportunity to place memorabilia inside that circle of honor. I don't honor. remember the last time I told him that I loved him. I would give anything to go back to the morning of September 11th and tell him how much I appreciate everything he's done for me. But I think he knows that now. In my eyes, he's died a hero. And how much more could you ask for? There's a quote that pretty much speaks for itself. You never lose anything. Not really. Things, people, they go away sooner or later. You can't hold them any more than you can hold the moonlight. But if they've touched you, if they're inside of you, then they're still yours. Frank, as I look back on these days, I realize how much I'll truly miss you and how much I truly love you. You were the best father I could ever ask for. I miss you and I hope you didn't hurt too much. Love, Marianne. how we all wish we could go back to that day. How we all wish that. A year ago in this moment, there was so much hysteria here. And in this moment, and it won't Harry be Jackson, all day, there is so Nicholas much sorrow. Andrew Bogdan. Darren in this moment. Lawrence Francis Boisseau. Vincent M. Bolin Jr. Tori Bolorci. Alan bon Bodonkenko. Andre Bonhier Jr. Colin Arthur Bonet. Frank Bonamo. Yuban Lucia Bonano. Janine Bonsignore. Sean Booker. Kelly Ann Booms. Sherry Ann Bordeaux. Christine Bordenabe. Martin Boziski. Richard Edward Bosco. Claus Volte. Carol Marie Bouchard. John Bolton. Francisco Eligio Bordier. Thomas Harold. Bowden Jr. Kimberly S. Bowers. 
Veronique Nicole Bowers. Sean Edward Bowman Jr. Larry Bowman. Kevin L. Bowser. Jenny Boyarski, Pamela Boyce, Michael Boyle, Alfred Bracco, Kevin Bracken, David Brian Brady, Alexander Braginski, Nicholas W. Brandamardi, Daniel Raymond Brandhorst, David Reed Gamboa Brandhorst, Michelle Renee Bratton, Patricia Brout. Lydia E. Bravo. Ronald Michael Breitweiser. Edward A. Brennan III. Francis Henry Brennan. Michael E. Brennan. Peter Brennan. Thomas M. Brennan. Daniel J. Brothel. Gary Lee Bright. Jonathan Briley. Mark A. Brisman. Paul Gary Bristow. Mark Francis Broderick. Henry Charles Broghammer. Keith A. Broomfield. Brown. Janice Shalewis Brown. Lloyd Stanford Brown. Patrick J. Brown. Bettina Brown. Mark Bruce. Ronald George Bruherty. Andrew Brune, Vincent Brunton, Ronald Paul Buka, Brandon J. Buchanan, Gregory Joseph Buck, Dennis Buckley, Nancy Claire Buesch, Patrick Joseph Booz, John Edwards Bulaga Jr., Stephen Boonin, William Francis Burke Jr., Matthew J. Burke, Thomas Daniel Burke, Donald J. Burns, Kathleen Ann Burns, Keith James Burns, John Patrick Burnside, Irina Buslo, Milton G. Bustio, Thomas M. Barr, Patrick Burns. Tali Cabezas, Lillian Caceres, Brian Joseph Cachia, Stephen Dennis Gafiero Jr., Richard M. Cagiano, Cecile Morella Cacuicla, John Brett Cahill, Michael John Cahill, Scott Walter Cahill, Thomas Joseph Cahill, George Kane, Salvatore B. Calabro, Joseph Calendrio, Philip B. Calgano, Edward Calderon, Kenneth Marcus Codwell, Dominic Enrico Calia, Felix Calixti, Frank Callahan, Leanne Callahan, Luigi Calvi, Rocco Kamas, Michael F. Camerata, David Ote Campbell, Jeffrey Thomas Campbell, Jill Marie Campbell, Robert Arthur Campbell, Patricia Campbell, Sean Thomas Canavan. John A. Candela. Vincent Cangelosi. Stephen J. Cangelosi. Lisa Bella Canava. Brian Canarazzo. Michael Canty. Louis Anthony Cabovici. Jonathan Neff Capello. James Christopher Capers. Richard Michael Caproni. Jose Manuel Cardona. Dennis M. Carey. Steve Carey. Edward Carlino. 
Michael Scott Carlo, David G. Carlone, Rosemary C. Carlson, Mark Stephen Carney, Joyce Ann Carbonetto, Ivan Luis Carpio Batista, Jeremy M. Carrington, Michael Carroll, Peter Carroll, James Joseph Carson Jr. Christopher Mikel Costigan. Marsha Cecil Carter. James Marcel Cortier. Vivian Casaldic. John Francis Casaza. Paul R. Cascio. Margarita Casillas. Thomas Anthony Casoria. William Otto Caspa. Alejandro Castaño. Herman Castillo Garcia. Arcelia Castillo. Leonard M. Castellano. Jose Ramon Castro. Richard G. Cattarelli. Christopher Sean Caton. Robert John Caulfield. Mary Teresa Caulfield. Judson Cavalier. Michael Joseph Coley. Jason David Kane. Juan Amando Sebilio. Jason Michael Cefalu. Thomas Joseph Selick. Anna Mercedes Centeno. Joni Sesta. Jeffrey Moore Chernoff. Swarna Chelasny. William Chalkoff. Charles Lawrence Chen, Mandy Chen, Mark Lawrence Charette, Gregorio Manuel Chavez, Delrose E. Chatham, Pedro Franklin Checo, Douglas McMillan Cherry, Stephen Patrick Cherry, Vernon Paul Cherry, Nesta Julio Chevalier, Swade Chevalier, Alexander H. Chang, Dorothy J. Kikar Piaro, Luis Alfonso Chimbo, Robert Chen, Wing Y. Ching, Nicholas Paul Chafalo, John Chipura, Peter A. Carcarillo, Catherine Charles, Kiyo B. Cho, Abul K. Chowdhury, Mohammed Salah Udin Chowdhury, Kirsten L. Christophe, Pamela Chu, Stephen Chucknick, Y. Chung, Christopher Chiafardini, F. Ciccone, Francis Ann Chilente, Elaine Chilo, Nestor Andre Citron III, Edna Cintron, Robert Dominic Siri, Juan Pablo Cisneros Alvarez, Benjamin Keith Clark, Eugene Clark, Gregory Allen Clark, Manny Leroy Clark, Thomas R. Clark, Christopher Robert Clark, Donna Marie Clark, Michael J. Clark, Saria Rachel Emma Clark, Kevin Francis Cleary, James D. Clear, Jeffrey W. Cloud, Susan Marie Klein, Stephen Coakley, Jeffrey Allen Cole, Patricia A. Cody, Daniel Michael Coffey, Jason M. Coffey, Florence G. Cohen, Kevin Sanford Cohen, Anthony Joseph Caladonato, Mark Joseph Caleo, Stephen J. Caleo, Christopher M. Colasanti, Kevin Nathaniel Colbert, Michael P. Colbert, Keith E. Coleman, Scott Thomas Coleman, Taro Coleman, Liam Joseph Colhoun, Robert D. Collin, Robert J. Cole, Jean Collin, 
John Michael Collins. Michael L. Collins. Thomas J. Collins. Joseph Collison. Jeffrey Dwayne Coleman. Patricia Malia Kaladner. Linda M. Colon. Saul E. Colon. Ronald Edward Comer. Sandra Jolaine Conati Brace. Jaime Concepcion. Albert Conde. Denise Connolly. Susan P. Conlon. Margaret Mary Connor. Cynthia Marie Lise Connolly. John E. Connolly, Jr. James Lee Connor. Jonathan M. Connors. Kevin Patrick Connors. Kevin F. Conroy. Jose Manuel Contreras Fernandez. Brenda E. Conway. Dennis Michael Cook. Helen D. Cook. Jeffrey W. Combs. John A. Cooper. Joseph John Capo, Jr. Gerard J. Coppola. Joseph Albert Corbett. John J. Corcoran III. Alejandro Cordero. Robert Cordis. Ruben D. Correa. Danny A. Correa Gutierrez. James J. Corrigan. Carlos Cortez. Kevin Cosgrove. Dolores Marie Costa. Dina Alexandra Costanza. Charles Gregory Costello, Jr. Michael S. Costello. Conrad K. Catoy. Martin J. Coglin. John Gerard Co Coglin. Timothy J. Coglin. James E. Cove. Andre Cox. Frederick John Cox. James Raymond Coyle. Michelle Coyle Eula. Anne Marie Kramer. Christopher S. Kramer. Denise Elizabeth Krant. James Leslie Crawford, Jr. Robert James Crawford. Tara Kathleen Kramer. Joanne Mary Cregan. Lucy Crafazzi. John A. Krishi. Daniel Hal Chrisman. Dennis Cross. Kevin Raymond Crotty. Thomas G. Crotty. John Crow. Wells Ramey Crowther. Robert L. Crookshank. John Robert Cruz. Grace U. Chua. Kenneth John Cubas. Francisco Cruz Cubero. Thelma Cuccinello. Richard J. Cudina. Neil James Cudmore. Thomas Patrick Cullen III. Joyce Cummings. Brian Thomas Cummins. Michael Cunningham. Robert Curatolo. Lawrence Damien Cutria. Paul Dario Curioli. Patrick Curavan. Andrew Peter Charles Curry Green. Beverly Curry. Michael S. Curtin. Gavin Cushney. John Delaria. Vincent Gerard D'Amadeo. Jack D'Ambrosi. Mary D. Antonio. Edward A. Diatri. Michael D. Dioria. Michael Jude Despacito. Manuel John Damota. Caleb Aaron Black. Carlos S. Da Costa. Joyo Alberto Da Fonseca. Brian Paul Dale. Thomas A. Damaskinos. Janine Marie Dimano Jones. Patrick W. Danahy. Nana Danso. Vincent Dons. Dwight Donald Darcy. Elizabeth Ann Darling. Annette Andrea Dataram. Lawrence Davidson. Michael Allen Dayton. Scott Matthew Davidson. Titus Davidson. Niorca Davila. 
Clinton Davis. Wayne Terrio Davis. Anthony Richard Dawson. Calvin Dawson. Edward James Day. Dorothy Alma Diarejo. J. Sorel M. De Chavez. Jennifer De Jesus. Monica E. De Jesus. Noridia De Jesus. Emerita De La Pena. Azucente Maria De La Torre. Jose Nicolas De Pena. David Paul De Rubio. Jamal Legaze De Santis. Christian Louis De Simone. Melanie Louise DeVere. William Thomas Dean. Robert J. DeAngelis Jr. Thomas Patrick DeAngelis. Tara E. DeBeck. Anna Maria DeBin. James V. De Blasi. Paul DeCola. Simon Marash De Dufkash. Jason DeFazio. David A. DeFeo. Manuel DeVaya Jr. Donald Arthur De La Pena. Vito Joseph DeLone. Danielle. De Danielle and DeLee. God bless them all. Joseph A. De La Pietra. Andrea De La Bella. Palmena Delegante, Pauline and Delari, Francis Albert De Martine, Anthony Demas, Martin and De Mayo, Francis De May, Carol K. De Metz, Kevin Dennis, Thomas F. Dines, Jean De Palma, Robert. John Durani, Michael Derienzo, Edward Desimoni III, Andrew Desperito, Sandy Ann Dewell, Jerry DeVito, Robert P. You can't Yvette help Jr. but feel the Dennis profound sense of loss here. Gerard We're just a little Gerard. over into the 35 minutes of reading of the, the names of those who lost their lives here and we're just to the letter D. We're on the D's. Uh, it would take a, um, a stronger heart than I have, I'll tell you that, to, uh, to not feel it breaking a little bit. Uh, this will go on until all 2,800 names are read, till all 2,800 families uh, can come down that ramp to that circle to a place that is justifiably called the Circle of Honor. As it is going on, so too now begins the commemoration in Washington, D.C. at the Pentagon. These are happening concurrently and we will hopefully gently and gracefully, perhaps even elegantly, move from one to the other. There's a moment coming up towards the top of the hour. We'll come back to New York for that. As we note the, uh, the moment that the first collapse. But at the Pentagon, as you can see, the ceremony there is beginning as well. Wolf Blitzer is at the Pentagon. Wolf, uh, give us a sense of who is there and who is coming. Well, the, uh, about 13,000 people uh, have been invited uh, to attend this very moving ceremony. It's uh, about to begin. The U.S. Army Band has been playing for about a half an hour or so. The President of the United States will be here delivering what the White House says will be an important address to the nation, indeed to the world. The Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, General Richard Myers, as well as the Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld, both of them will be speaking as well. In addition, you, you might see some children 
up on the stage, about 100 children. They are representing Washington, D.C. area schools, uh, schools that uh, were once the schools of some of the children aboard American Airlines Flight 77. That plane, of course, exactly one year ago, crashed here at the Pentagon, and that, uh, of course, resulted in the death of uh, 189 people killed, 125 of them on the ground, people who were working inside the Pentagon, 64 aboard Flight 77. That was 58 passengers, floor fl four flight attendants, and two of pilots, in addition, of course, the five hijackers who commandeered that plane. The U.S. Senate is here, members of the House of Representatives. Earlier we saw the Senate the Majority Leader Tom Daschle chatting with the uh, Senate Republican Leader, the Minority Leader Trent Lott, Condoleezza Rice. We saw her walking in, uh, top officials from the Pentagon and elsewhere here in Washington. There will be uh, an invocation, music selection. Moment of silence will occur exactly at 9.37 a.m. Moment of silence when flight, American Airlines Flight 77 crashed into the Pentagon. At 9.38, a minute later, a huge uh, American flag, 20 feet by 38 feet, will be unfurled and will uh, go over the wall here at the Pentagon, uh, the uh, outside wall that had been destroyed, remarkably rebuilt over these past 12 months. People are now back at their desks where they had worked before the uh, September 11th attacks. First uh, speaker will be the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, then uh, the defense secretary, and then the president of the United States. In addition, they'll be doing Chris the Pledge Lippert, of Allegiance yes. and other matters. Washington, uh, in many ways, has become what it was uh, prior to. There is plenty of partisanship in Washington, but on this day, as we join again the reading of the names in New York, uh, it is much more a united city, and, and perhaps that will extend past the day, but it certainly exists today. And I know we don't know exactly what the president is going to say uh, when he makes his remarks, but he may have given us some idea in the editorial he wrote that appeared in the New York Times this morning when he said the September 11th attacks moved Americans to grief and horror and moved our nation to war. They revealed the cruelty of our enemies, clarified grave threats to our country, and demonstrated the character and decency of our people. The president and the first lady now uh, have arrived outside the Pentagon. We saw the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Myers, Secretary Rumsfeld, to the left of your screen. How familiar a face has he become in the last year? Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for our invocation, delivered by Major General Gunboots. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask you to bless us as we gather today in this sacred place. While the reality of our pain and loss has become all too apparent, we ask you now to bless the memory of those who made the ultimate sacrifice a year ago. Bless those who suffered injury and are still recovering. Bless all of those who aided in the rescue and recovery. Bless all the affected families and friends who struggle with the loss and pain. Our tribute to all of them, O oh Lord, is our steadfast resolve. We are amazed and grateful for the immense accomplishment of reconstruction. The rebuilding of the Pentagon is more than the restoration of stone and steel. It represents the spirit of America. Lord, it represents our nation standing together, restored and renewed by your life-giving love and hope. Today, Lord, we rise as a people to meet the challenges of a new day, fortify our inner courage as we hold the moral high ground, deepen our resolve to stand against evil no matter the cost, and grant us, Lord, wisdom to continue building on the foundation of equality, justice, and liberty. Now, Lord, we offer this sacred ground to you and ask your blessing upon it. We will not let those who died fade from our memories. We will not be swayed from our faithful service in the cause of freedom. With your blessing, Lord, we consecrate this building, all who serve here, all the men and women, of our armed forces who serve around the world. 
Guide us as we press on in the cause of justice and peace for our country and for the world. God bless America. Amen. Please be seated. The invocation at the Pentagon. As we said, these events now are going on concurrently in, uh, in New York where it is windy. To say the least. least. It is windy. I expect you to hear that. And they read the names, each and every name. And the family members come down. Andrew Fisher. And the tears are shed. Each family member having spent a great deal of time thinking about what to leave in their loved one's honor, and many of them Besides leaving, flowers have left personal mementos at Ground Zero. As you listen to these names, or at least as I have, you get this great portrait of what, not just New York, but what the country is from the, the Latin names and the Northern and Eastern European names and the Asian names. This is the country that we are, it's certainly the city Joseph that we Hawkins. are in New York City. This is our country these days. And much healing remains to be done. We talked to many of these family members down there about what it means to be at Ground Zero today, and they will tell you there's no such thing as closure. They live with the enduring memory of their loved ones on a minute by minute basis. Very difficult for them to erase the pain of what they've endured over the last year. Well, a year is an important human and psychological marker. We, we've gone through the season of our grief, but that's very different from ending our grief. And no one who lost a father or husband sees that empty seat at the table, forgets. This is Trinity Church here in New York. Across the city today, there are many services, large and small, to mark the moment and the day. Church in uh, here in New York at the Trade Center. The reading of the names goes on at the Pentagon. The ceremony is just getting underway. We also should remind you of the ceremonies that have been held in London today and in Afghanistan and many other places around the world. And I hope and I suspect that in many homes and in offices this morning, all around the country, people have stopped, they've looked at each other a little bit differently, they've watched this with a greater sense of uh, understanding and purpose. This is an American experience, not a New York or a Washington experience. Tom Ridge, the Homeland Security Director in Shanksville. He was governor of the state of Pennsylvania a year ago. He was once talked about as a possible vice presidential candidate. He is now the president's advisor, I guess technically is the term for Homeland Security, a job that didn't exist and perhaps many thought was not necessary a year ago. We know better. Turn to the Pentagon now, where a moment of silence is about to mark, marking the exact time the Pentagon was struck a year ago.
escorted by Secretary Rumsfeld, will move to the side stage for the unfurling of the American flag and our national anthem. Please stand. will be led by children representing the following schools. Bertie Backus Middle School, Ketchum Elementary School, Leckie Elementary School, University Park Elementary School. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty. Uh, they, Dr. Kissinger, some of the uh, children leading the pledge there know this tragedy too well. They lost classmates and the parents of classmates in the events of the 11th, the ceremony at the Pentagon, the reading of the in New York as well. Our senior White House correspondent, John King, has already made his way to New York. The president will be here uh, in New York uh, later today, but John has an idea of what the president's going to say in a few minutes at the Pentagon. John? Aaron, good morning to you from here at Ground Zero. The President's remarks, we were told, will run about 12 to 15 minutes, that the White House views this and the President's a moment to look back and reflect on the lives lost, the families whose lives were changed forever. The President will use the symbol of that building behind him, now repaired a year later, to say the nation has come a long way in its healing, but has a long way more to go. Do not look for the President beyond a tribute to the troops involved in the ongoing war against terrorism. Do not look for the President to be looking forward today or discussing the ongoing campaign. 
campaign. That will come tomorrow in a speech to the United Nations. This, we are told, a chance for the president to reflect on his own thoughts on the pain the country suffered and to reflect his resolve without being specific to carry the fight against terrorism forward. We will hear from the Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld at this ceremony as well. And then, as you noted, the president goes on to Shanksville, Pennsylvania. He has never been to the crash site of Flight 93. No remarks from the president there. And a brief address, we are told, to look for about eight to ten minutes from the president tonight when he addresses the nation from here in New York. And, John, how will the speech tonight differ from the speech this morning? Not much different, we are told. The president very much wants to make this about the families and the pain they suffered a year ago, the lives lost. He will, in the speech tonight, talk a little bit more about his forward-looking resolve to continue the fight against terrorism. Look, though, for much more on that front from the president tomorrow at the United Nations when he will discuss not only the ongoing war in Afghanistan and the fight against al-Qaeda, but his position that the world should be considering expanding this to a potential second front in Iraq. That will come tomorrow. The White House says this is not the moment for policy speeches. This is not the moment for the president to be lobbying any other world leaders. This is a chance to look back and reflect. There's one quick for you. The president, remember, it took him 10 hours to get back to Washington last September 11th. An aide's recall on Marine One on the flight in from Andrews Air Force Base, approaching the 7 o'clock hour in the evening at that point. The president looking out the window and getting his first first-hand look at the devastation. The smoke still rising from the Pentagon. The president motioned to the handful of aides on the helicopter, told them to look down. He said, ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at the face of war in the 21st century. So at the Pentagon today, a powerful reminder of the president's very hectic day one year ago today. And John, the president delivers uh, these addresses uh, under the specter of this increased state of alert we find ourselves in. And I know the defense secretary yesterday said there was uh, very little consideration given to canceling today's events. Walk us through what the administration was up against as they decided to go ahead with all of this today. Paul, the president was very determined, we are told, that these events should go forward, that the nation should take this moment to pause and reflect. He was also determined, though, when he received a briefing the other night from the CIA director, George Tenet, the president called that the tipping point, if you will, on all the intelligence data that has come his way in recent weeks. And he decided, although all the specific information is about possible threats to U.S. installations overseas, that was the case on September 10th and the early morning hours of September 11th a year ago. Because of that information, the president did want to raise the threat of assessment here. You have live missiles in those batteries around the Pentagon and other key installations in Washington today. So a high state of alert. But I spoke to several senior administration officials this morning who say they still are nervous. They still have their fingers crossed, but they have seen nothing in the overnight intelligence reports to make them think there is any specific threat against any of these commemoration ceremonies or any targets in the United States for that matter. Thanks, John. You said it would be the president's intent, uh, intent to focus in on the families in both of uh, not only the remarks he makes today, uh, but what he will later say in Shanksville, later tonight in, in New York. And that's where exactly, uh, I think, we're eventually going to take our audience back to other. that very painful reading of the names of those that lost their lives at Ground Zero a year ago. This has been going on not quite an hour now, not quite an hour, Aisha, and we have Dennis, reached Harris, the middle of the alphabet Stewart, Dennis, as Harris, we work our way through 2,800 John, lives Harris, lost. Hot. We are on the Harris, H's. Hart, oh no. I guess the, the one picture Clinton, that hot. most of you will find very moving Emirates, today down at Ground Harvey. Zero is um, the circle of honor, which you'll eventually see here. Passion which is at the lowest level of the site, and family members are actually given access to a ramp. They walk down, uh, and they're handed a flower, and they're given the opportunity to, to leave a flower, and their loved ones are as well as um, personal memos. And, it, and what it, it's stunning to me is here we are a year later, people still uh, filling the perimeter fences well, with Yes. Commemorations. I was, I was thinking the same thing. The, um, if, for people uh, who've lived here, but for many of you, because you've, you've been brought here so many times, there were those painful days when they were the missing posters that dotted the city. You, you could hardly go anywhere in New York and not see them. Uh, we're long past that moment, but we are not at all past the moment where there are throughout the city, at firehouses and in storefronts, uh, pictures, memories, thoughts, poems, songs, uh, everything imaginable to remind us, all of us in the country, 
what went on, what happened. That is the circle that Paula referred to a moment ago. And, and oh my, how it's grown as, as these family members come down. For us, some of the families, it's their first trip down to Ground Zero. I was talking with uh, two families a couple days ago who said they simply didn't have the strength to venture there before today. And uh, for some reason, uh, they're making the trek today, and they hope they will find some comfort, some, some sense of strength. There was a couple of months, uh, two or three, on a Sunday afternoon, a chilly, kind of breezy Sunday here, um, a memorial service at Ground Zero for the family members. Um, and while all of the dignitaries that you would expect to show up at an event like that were there, uh, they said none of the words you expected. There were simple readings of poems and uh, musical interludes. It was the most wonderful and solemn event you could imagine, um, at least until this moment, which has been equally so. If we can just bring the sound up for a second and listen some more. Higley the second. Todd Russell Hill. Clara Victoria Hines. Neil O. Hines. Mark D. Hindi. Katsuyuki Hirai. Heather Malia Ho. Tara Yvette Hobbs. Thomas Anderson Hobbs. James J. Hoban. Robert Wayne Hobson. Patrick A. Hoey. Ronald George Horner. Marsha Hoffman. John A. Hoffer. Frederick Joseph Hoffman. Stephen G. Hoffman. Judith Flores Hoffmiller. Paul Hoffman. Jonathan R. Holman. Thomas Warren Holwood, Jr. John Holland. Cora Hidalgo Holland. Elizabeth Holmes. Joseph F. Holland. Herbert Wilson. I wanted to share with Homer. you now something that Christy Farrer wrote. She Holland. lost her husband, who was the third head of the Port Authority on September 11th, and she writes this Bradley morning. Horn. We who have wept for Michael a year need America Moore. to heal with us. We Michael changed Reed. when deep Paul darkness Paul pierced Ford. that summer day, when buildings became Matthew battlefields, Douglas then tombs. Morning. We changed when our unsuspecting loved ones were anointed as dead heroes, when the bravery Michael of hundreds Robert in uniform Morris. and the courage of those passengers on Flight Aaron 93 Howley. that day put Girl, others first. And then she goes on to say, never forget. Seek justice, but turn away from the vengeance that breeds more hatred. America's good energy is in the firehouses, factories, and schools. It thrives in small shops and corporate boardrooms. Draw on the contagious vitality this nation inspires and allow that to lift. It is time. Christie's uh, husband was in the towers that day. This is a I believe Robert this is right, Thomas the executive Hughes. director of the Port Authority, uh, which Hughes. owns the owns the land and until recently Hughes. ran the buildings. Susan. And she's now the mayor's representative uh, of the families. While this goes on here in New York, William this painful part of the day, uh, in Washington, the uh, Pentagon ceremony Joseph is uh, moving ahead. Robert Wolf Blitzer is there for us. Not surprisingly, Wolf. Thomas Edward Hines. A hero for today, Vice Army Staff Sergeant Steve Kramer of the U.S. Army Band, setting the stage for the Defense Secretary, Donald Rumsfeld, who will speak right now. President Bush, Mrs. Bush, members of Congress and the Cabinet, distinguished foreign guests, family members, General Myers, and the Pentagon family, welcome. 
We're here today to honor those who died in this place and to rededicate ourselves to the cause for which they gave their lives, the cause of human liberty. In a sense, we meet on a battlefield. If it does not appear so today, that is because of the singular devotion of the men and women who work day and night to fulfill a solemn vow that not one stone of this building would be out of place on this anniversary. We, we thank you for your dedication and your accomplishment. But one year ago, this was a battle zone, a scene of billowing smoke, towering flames, broken rock, and twisted metal. It says much about our nation and the fierceness and resilience of the American people that were we not here now in this solemn ceremony, a visitor passing would see of terrible events that took place here but one year ago today. But we must not forget what happened here. Dedicated men and women came here on a clear September morning to serve their country and then in an instant were taken from us. We gather today to remember them, but we're here for another purpose as well, to mark that first anniversary of a day that will be remembered by history and commemorated by successive generations so long as we remain free people. For a battle was joined on that day, a battle still unfolding between a nation of free people and forces that seek to plunge that nation, and indeed the free world, into the darkness of tyranny and terror. We assemble today to ask what has been accomplished in the name of those who die, and on behalf of those who live. One month after the attacks, our Commander-in-Chief came here to the Pentagon to speak to us, to console us, and to encourage us for the struggle still ahead. Of the terrorists, Mr. President, you said they dwell in dark corners. With patience, the terrorists will be pursued. They will be isolated, surrounded, until there's no place to run, to hide, or to rest. Well, to the men and women of the armed forces, this you are doing. In Afghanistan, you have rescued a country and liberated a people. You've rooted the terrorists out of the caves and the shadows. You are performing heroically know that the American people value what you do for our country. In this past year, your, some of your comrades have given their lives in the defense of freedom, and we remember each of them today. And to their families, we offer our sympathy and thank you for the love of country that you instilled in each of those extraordinary human beings. And we remember in our prayers each of the Allied soldiers who have fallen on the field of battle. From the first moments of this struggle, America knew she was not alone. Support came from every corner of the world. Mr. President, the coalition you have assembled is truly remarkable. Some 90 nations, literally half of the world, have joined in this effort the greatest military coalition ever assembled in human history. Many coalition partners are here today. And we say to you, thank you for standing with us. And please extend our gratitude to your fellow citizens. Tell them how much we value their friendship and their steadfastness. The past year, we've been awakened to our vulnerabilities, made conscious of the dangers we face in this new century. That awakening came at a terrible price, but the terrorists aspire to even greater destruction. Unless they are stopped, the light of history will fade from this day, turning its gaze instead to subsequent days, when not thousands, but tens of thousands of lives could be lost. The road ahead is long, but while we have a not yet achieved victory, we know in one important sense that the terrorists who attacked us have already been defeated. They were defeated before the first shot was fired in Afghanistan. They were defeated because they failed utterly to achieve their objectives. 
There wanted September 11th to be a day when innocents died. Instead, it was a day when heroes were born. The terrorists wanted September 11th to be a day when hatred